The Whistler. Now the Whistler's strange story, Murder at Twin Pines. From the porch of the old gray house on the hill, Victoria Crane peered through the low morning haze that hovered over the lake, watched the boats move slowly back and forth across the water. Then her eyes swept past the tiny village of Twin Pines, nestled on the lakefront, came to rest on the figure of a man standing on the boat dock. For several minutes, she watched Sheriff Tilson, saw him as he tapped the ashes from his pipe and returned it to his mouth. Then, thrusting his hands into his pockets, he started up the path toward her. Somewhat nervously, Victoria's gaze shifted to the lake again, then back to the approaching figure. Presently, she heard the door behind her close, and her sister Meg came out onto the porch. Good morning, Vic. Oh, Meg. Sleep well? Mm Mm-hmm. Like an infant. Oh, goodness, looks like we're going to have another nice day. Mm, yes, it does. Vic? Mm-hmm? What's going on at the lake? What are all those boats doing out there? They're dragging the lake, dear. Dragging the lake? What for? They think they'll find a body. What? A woman. Cher thinks she may have been murdered. Oh, how horrible. But what makes him think that? Well, night before last, several people heard shots from somewhere out on the lake. And yesterday, a rowboat was found drifting along the North Shore. Is that all they have to go on? No. This morning, some boys found a woman's scarf in the reeds near the boat dock. Vic, do they have any idea who the woman is? No. You had your breakfast, dear? Uh, Yeah, yes, I've had breakfast. Meg, you know, I've been thinking about that dress material we saw yesterday. I do believe we could get much better if we went up to San Francisco this week and... Meg? Uh, What? Why aren't you listening to me, Meg? Oh, I'm sorry, Vic. I was... Hello uh... there. Oh, good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, Victoria. Meg? Good morning. Find the body yet, Sheriff? What? Well, you might know the news is all over the village. I heard about it two hours ago. Find out who the scarf belonged to? The scarf? Oh, it belonged to a young woman who was staying at the lodge. You don't mean Margot Reed, do you? Uh Uh-huh. Know her? I know of her. You know how people talk. We don't often have strangers here in Twin Pines, and when a glamour girl like Margot Reed shows up, well... I don't suppose you know why she came here, do you? No. No, I don't. Meg. Uh, Yes? Any idea where your fiancé is? No, not exactly. But what do you want with Ben? Ben Driscoll's newspaper office was closed when I went down there this morning. Oh, well, I, I think he drove up to San Francisco last night on business. I see. Why do you ask? Oh, figured he might be able to give me a line on things. The Reed girl stayed pretty much to herself all the time she was here, except... Except what, Sheriff? Well, I understand she dropped around to see Ben at the newspaper office several times. Ben? She... She went to see Ben? Uh Uh-huh. That's what I want to talk to him about. Maybe he has some idea what she wanted here in Twin Pines. I see. Well, I guess I better get back to the lake. Uh, Mind if I go along with you, Sheriff? No, no, don't mind at all. I won't be long, Vic. What? Oh, Oh, all right, Meg. See you later, Victoria. Margot went to see Ben. She went to... Oh, if I'd known. If I'd only known. It's something you hadn't counted on, isn't it, Victoria? A threat. It could ruin everything. That is, if you allowed it to. But you've faced worse situations before, bluffed them through with your cleverness. But even now, in spite of what's happened, you're confident that somehow you'll find a way out. You sit there, staring out over the lake, and wonder how much Margot told Ben Driscoll. And if your sister's fiancé now knows the secret you once shared with Margot Reed. The secret you thought would be yours alone. 
after her death. There's nothing you can do now but wait. Wait for Ben to return. And then finally, late that afternoon, you hear a car pull into the driveway. You hurry outside, see Ben get out of his car. He stands there for a moment, looking down at the lake, a puzzled frown on his face. Hello, Ben. Hmm? Oh, hello, Vic. So what's going on down there? They're dragging the lake. What? You mean they're looking for a... Yes, there's been a murder. So the sheriff says. Well, how do you like that? First time I leave Twin Pines in over a year and a murder takes place. Say, I better get down there. Ben, wait. Hmm? They think it's Margot Reed. Margot. Margot Reed. The sheriff wants to talk to you, Ben. He thinks you might be able to tell him what she was doing here in Twin Pines. No one else seems to know. But, Vic, I... What's the matter, Ben? Nothing. I I think I'd better go. Ben, wait. Do you know what Margot Reed was doing here? Did she tell you? Ben, Ben. Oh, hello, darling. You just get back? Yeah. You heard what's happened. Vic was just telling me about it. (laughs) I was saying, fine newspaper man I am. Biggest story we've had around here in years, and I have to be out of town. You haven't seen the sheriff yet? No, no. I'm on my way now. Will you be back? Yeah, later. I have a number of things to do at the office. I'll call you, darling. Bye. Hello? Hello. Vic. Yes, Ben. Is Meg there? No, she went out right after supper. I don't expect her back for another hour or so. Can I come over right away? Well, of course. Did you talk to the sheriff? Yes, I... I'd like to see you about that, Vic. I'd like to talk to you. Alone. It's turned out just as you feared it would, hasn't it, Victoria? You're certain Ben knows something. Perhaps that you're the reason why Margot Reed came to Twin Pines. Yes, somehow you can't believe she's told him everything, can you? That doesn't sound like Margot. You're sure that she wouldn't admit blackmail to a perfect stranger. And so you wait anxiously for Ben to arrive and stare out the window. Watch the small boats as they move back and forth across the water searching for the missing Margot Reed. A quarter of an hour later, you're sitting in the library facing Ben. I... I hardly know where to begin, Vic. You know why Margot Reed came here, don't you? Yeah, of course. But I I didn't tell the sheriff. Perhaps I should have. I don't know. They'll, They'll find out sooner or later. Will they? I'm telling you this, Vic, because I know I can trust you. You've got to talk to somebody about it. You see... Margot and I were married once. What? Yeah. We called it quits five years ago, divorce. Shortly after that, I came here to Twin Pines, bought the paper. I lost track of her completely until a month ago. I got a letter from Margot. Oh, Vic, don't look at me like that. I know I should have told Meg, but... So Margot Reed came here to see you. Yeah, she said the divorce was a mistake. She wanted us to... Well, of course, I told her it was no use, but she stayed around the village anyway. And then... The day before yesterday, she came into the office. She was excited about something. Oh? Said she'd accidentally run into someone here. An old friend. Did she... Did she tell you who it was? No. No, I think she was about to, but Eddie walked into the office then. Eddie? Yeah, Eddie Farrell, my assistant at the paper. And that's something else, Vic. Eddie overheard Margot say she'd see me that night. I'm sure he did. Did you see her? No. no I waited for her at my cottage, but she didn't show up. That must have been the night she... Oh, Vic, I pulled a stupid stunt. I should have told the sheriff the whole truth. Well, it's too late now, Ben. It it would only make matters worse. If I were you, I'd leave things just as they are. There's a chance they'll never find out. But suppose Eddie tells him I had a date to see Margot that night, and suppose the sheriff starts to investigate Margot's past. Ben, 
Then listen to me. I don't know why everyone's getting so excited. What proof is there that the girl's actually dead? She could have suddenly decided to run up to the city for some reason or other. Well... Then I think it's best not to think about it anymore. Try to put it out of your mind. I, for one, will believe Margot Reed is dead when I see them drag her up from the lake. And I don't think they ever will, Ben. I don't think they ever will. That you, Meg? Yes. Did Ben call while I was out? He stopped in for a moment. Had to dash back to the paper. Said he'd call you in the morning. Oh, I see. Oh, by the way, Meg, I think I'll drive up to San Francisco in the morning. Want to come along? No, no, thanks. I'd rather not. Uh, you going to see about the dress material? Mm, yes. There's something else I have to take care of, too. <laughs> Yes, and it's an important matter, isn't it, Victoria? The idea occurred to you while Ben was talking about his marriage to Margot Reed. You don't want to do this to Ben, your own sister's fiancé, do you? But you're sure Meg will eventually get over it. And it's the only way to protect yourself. The perfect opportunity to produce a suspect for Sheriff Tilson. Prevent him from digging too deeply into Margot's past, her connection with you. The following morning, you drive up to San Francisco. Your first step is to inform one of the city's newspapers of a new development in the Twin Pines murder, that a prominent citizen of Twin Pines is withholding information from the sheriff. City editor. I have some information for you about the murder, Twin Pines. Who is this? My name isn't important. Now listen. A girl named Margot Reed has been murdered. I know about that. Well, here's something you don't know. Neither does the sheriff of Twin Pines. Margot Reed was once married to Ben Driscoll. He's the editor of the local paper. That's so? Look, where Check you... it yourself. It should be a big story. Goodbye. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You step out of the phone booth, a smile on your lips. It's done, isn't it, Victoria? You've made the first move. And now it's up to the newspaper. To some bright, eager reporter to follow through. Early that same evening, you return to Twin Pines to the house on the lake. As you step inside the door, Meg rushes out of the library into your arms. Oh, Meg. Oh, now, here, here. Well, now, what's all this? Oh, it's Ben. The sheriff's holding him for questioning. He's in jail. What? They, they came for him this afternoon while I was with Ben at the paper. There was a, a man with the sheriff, a, a reporter from a San Francisco newspaper... I don't know how he found out, but... Oh, Vic, Margot was Ben's wife. Ben admitted it. He said he was glad the truth was out. Do... Do they think he killed her? Oh, the sheriff didn't say, but I'm sure that's what he thinks. That's what they all think. But he couldn't have killed her. You don't think he did, do you, Vic? Of course not. I'm sure he didn't kill her. You're pleased with the way things have turned out, aren't you, Victoria? Yes. And you'll find it difficult to hold back a smile, even as you try to comfort your sister Meg. Your trip to the San Francisco newspaper paid off as you knew it would, and you congratulate yourself. But scarcely half an hour later, your joy turns to bitter disappointment and sudden fear. The doorbell rings, and as you answer it... Ben! Hello, Vic. Why, Ben, I... I, I heard about what happened. It's all right, Vic. The sheriff let me go. Well, that's fine. I told him the whole story. I guess it sounded all right to him, so here I am. Where's Meg? In the library. Come on in, Ben. Yeah, I'd like to see her. I have a lot of explaining to do. You lead Ben into the library to Meg. Sit there as Ben tells her the whole story. His marriage to Margot, the divorce, everything. And then suddenly something he says causes you to stiffen in your chair. Meg looks up quickly. Ben, did you say Margot worked for a Dr. Kingston in Seattle? Yeah, that's right, darling. She was working as a nurse in Seattle at the time we broke up. Dr. Kingston? Vic, that was Uncle Frank's doctor. Was it? Of course. 
Uh, Uncle Frank? Our father's brother. He'd been an invalid for a long time. Died five years ago in Seattle. He's the one who left us our money. Oh, oh, I see. Uncle Frank had a private nurse, didn't he, Vic? And if Margot worked for Dr. Kingston... Vic, you were at Uncle Frank's when the accident occurred. You wouldn't know if... Why, why, yes, but... Uh, Accident? Uncle Frank was killed accidentally, Ben. He he fell down a flight of stairs. Vic, about his nurse... You're mistaken, Meg. I remember the nurse Dr. Kingston had for Uncle Frank. It was not Margot Reed. Are you certain? Quite certain. It's a terrifying moment, isn't it, Victoria? And more than ever, you're aware that there must not be a big involved investigation. They must never find out that Margot Reed was at your uncle's house the night he was killed uh, accidentally. That's when it all began, didn't it? The moment Margot suspected the truth, that you had pushed the old man down the stairs, murdered him for the money he would leave to you and your sister Meg. No, there must not be an investigation. Though your first attempt to involve Ben has failed, you're not through yet, are you? Quickly, your mind turns to Eddie, Ben's assistant at the newspaper, and the possibility of using him to frame Ben. On your way down to the village the following day, a plan forms in your mind. Then in front of the coroner's office, what the sheriff is telling the crowd gives you a further advantage. That's right, that's right. The body's been found. Uh, What was it, Sheriff? Drowning? You'll read about it in the papers, Jed. Then it wasn't a drowning. You see, Emily, There were several bullet wounds. Margot Reed was murdered. Murdered? Did you find the gun? No, no, we haven't found the gun. Excuse me, Jed, Victoria. I've got to get along now. Now they know, don't they, Victoria? It's murder. And now you can get the gun and plant it in Ben's cottage when the right moment comes along. Yes, the gun must be there when you've finally given the sheriff enough clues to direct him to a murderer. But first, Victoria, you must begin to build a solid case against Ben, through his assistant, Eddie Farrell. Morning, Miss Victoria. Hello, Eddie. You hear the news? A couple of the sheriff's boys just dropped in. Oh, goodness, did they question you two? Huh? Well, me? Oh, gosh, no. They only... T- oh, yes. Yes, they told you she'd been shot. And... Yeah, yeah. I heard, too. I was down there. Oh, that poor girl. Well, I guess they know the kind of person to suspect. Uh, how do you mean? Well, you know. The sort of man who runs around a good deal. Unmarried, always an eye out for a pretty girl. <laughs> sure, I guess there's a few in this town. But oh, I... Eddie, goodness, you're taking what I have to say to heart. You don't think I'm talking about you? Oh no, no, I didn't think that. Well, with all the dates you have, it's an advantage, not something to put you under suspicion. What lucky girl were you out with on that particular night, Eddie? Why, uh. <laughs> Had two dates, probably. Wait. I I don't think I had any dates. What did you say, Eddie? Nothing. Uh, What was it you came in for, Miss Victoria? Let me see. What did I come in for? Oh, yes. Yes, I wondered if you had a copy of last week's paper, Eddie. There was a dress pattern in it I wanted. That all you wanted? Yes. Yes, that's all. Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry, Sheriff. I know how busy you are. If it's something to do with the case, Victoria, it doesn't interrupt. Well, it's about Eddie Farrell, Ben's assistant down at the paper. Oh, Sheriff, I really hate to suggest it, but... Go on, go on. It's just between the two of us. Well, he might have been with Margot that night, you know. Might is quite a word. I might have been with her myself. It was his attitude, Sheriff, when we were talking. The way he closed up. (laughs) Oh, you're right. Probably nothing. Still, Eddie does have quite a reputation with the girls, and... Yes, yes, I, I know. I'll have a little talk with Eddie. Nothing can be lost by asking a few questions, huh? He's right, isn't he, Victoria? Nothing can be lost by asking a few questions. 
In fact, you have a lot to gain. Yes. And you've used Eddie Farrow well to point the finger of suspicion at Ben. The proof of that comes late that afternoon when you overhear yes. Meg on the Please telephone. Listen to me. Don't come back now. You've got to stay where you are. Eddie Farrow has mixed you up in this. Uh, yes, he, he told the sheriff that you had a date with Margot. Oh, I, I know, I know. What? No, please, darling, no. No, no, you mustn't come back here. Not right now. Yeah, all right, but please promise me you'll stay there. Yes. Yeah, yeah I'll call again. Goodbye, darling. Meg. Oh, oh, Vic. Was that Ben you were talking to? Yes, he's up in San Francisco. Oh, Vic, I'm worried. I'm worried sick. What happened? The sheriff is looking for him again. More questions. What brought this on? Eddie Farrow. The sheriff dropped around to see Eddie this afternoon and... Oh, Vic, what can I do? Oh, no, no, dear. <laughs> Meg. Yes. Meg, you love him very much. Don't you? Yes. Very, very much. You must be absolutely sure of yourself. What, what are you... T You're worried about what you'll have to say if they ever put you on the stand. Well, I couldn't lie. But I couldn't testify against Ben. I couldn't. Well, you wouldn't have to if you were his wife. His wife? The law doesn't expect a wife to testify against her husband. Oh, Vic. Aren't you sure, Meg? Of course I'm sure. But then go to him. You love him, Meg. Go to Reno. Marry him at once. Vic. There's a bus leaving at eight tonight. I'll start packing your things. You better call Ben. Tell him you're coming. Hello? Sheriff Tilson speaking. Sheriff, this is Victoria. Yeah. Sheriff, I hate to tell you this because it involves my sister. But she must never know. What is it? Ben's hiding out somewhere in San Francisco. She's going to him. Left the house a few minutes ago. She's headed for the village, carrying an overnight bag. They're running off together? Oh, well, something like that. You'll have to follow her. She'll take you to him. All right, Victoria, and thanks. <laughs> As you hurry from the house, you tell yourself it's perfect, isn't it, Victoria? Meg is gone now on her way to Ben. She'll talk him into running away, and that's all you need. You know Sheriff Tilson won't let them get very far. All that's necessary now is to take the gun from where you've hidden it and plant it in Ben's cottage. You're certain the murder weapon can't be traced back to you. That when it's found at the cottage, it will definitely implicate him in the murder of Margot Reed. You hurry along the lake shore, keeping well in the shadows, using the darkness to advantage. You have no trouble getting into Ben's cottage. And in the half-darkness of moonlight, you cross the living room, open a closet, and locate one of Ben's old hunting jackets. You're about to place the gun in the pocket when you hear footsteps in the next room. Suddenly, a door opens and the lights go on. Meg! Victoria! You shouldn't have come here, Meg. Why, I had to. When I called Ben, he asked me to bring some of his things. I I've been packing them. But... Meg, you... Vic! What are you doing with that gun? What? I, I found it here, in, in Ben's jacket. Wait a minute, Victoria. You couldn't have. I searched this place completely just two hours ago. Sheriff Tilson, what are you doing here? Just what you asked me to, following your sister. She asked you to? Vic, what does this mean? I think it means Victoria outsmarted herself, Meg, trying to frame Ben. No, that's not true. We'll know more about that when we check this gun with the bullets that killed Margot Reed. I think it'll answer a lot of questions I've had on my mind all day. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.